Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be taking a quick look at the Flex Innovations per hour. Oh, let's just ignore that for a minute. We'll take a look at the Flex Innovations Piranha in particular. I'm going to be setting up air brakes on it for my buddy Nick, who actually now goes by the name of Manuel because we've, throughout this process we've worked out he does not read the manuals. Um, it's something pretty simple to set up. Uh, it might be a bit complicated if you use Harbour, but I'll cover that anyway. So, the idea of the air brakes is both the rudders will come in together when the throttles are idle to slow the model down. Let's get to it. Right, so I did just realize that the, the nose cone is somewhat loose on this already. Um, now, I could be nice, I could include that for Manuel and see Manuel and see if he notices that I fixed it, or I could just leave it loose to see if he actually bothers to watch this video. We'll see at the end. So, quick look at the Piranha. So it's made by Flex Innovations, it's a completely foam model and it comes pretty much ready to fly. That's the good things about it. Um, of course, their website, which I'll throw up on the screen in a minute and also include in a link below uh, in the description. It comes with an FT Flex, an FT Aura 5 Light Advanced Flight Control System, which clearly just rolls off the tongue, which is more, apparently is more than just a gyro. And it's the control system that we can actually plug into a PC to do extra configuration in it, which is what Manuel thought we had to do today. But from what I've actually read, because I have read the instructions, again, they're in the description below, is that you can just do this quite quickly by configuring one of the channels on your transmitter and it should hook up to the air brakes. But let's have a quick look at some more features of this model before we go on. And I'm gonna read those straight off the website, to be honest with you, because it's not mine and it's not really my thing, to be real honest with you. I mean, it's a pusher prop. They're just a pain in the backside to launch. Although this has got launch con launch assists, which is part of that gyro thing, which isn't a gyro, um, where you can just throw it by one wingtip and apparently it'll just go away nicely at 30 degrees and the world is good. The first time we tried that, I say we, it wasn't me. The first time we tried that, it went straight into the deck Hence why it's got some of the dents on it, and hence why probably the nose cone has come loose. Is that still, that is loose, does it pull out? Oh, oh, it's got tape on it. Oh, I see. It pulls out. I don't know why it pulls out. It has got tape on it, the tape's broken. Perhaps I won't glue that, in case it's meant to be out. Anyway, where was I? So, yeah, launch assist. So it's got launch assist. The idea is, because push props are hard to launch, because obviously you're throwing them up here, and the propeller can be by your head and your hands. Um, they've built something in called Launch Assist. We've not got it working yet. If we do get it working, um, I don't think we want to try it again, but we'll probably try it over long grass. If we get it working, we'll, we'll film that for sure. So, yeah, the phone model, ready to fly. It's got some cool tech in it, in fairness, and you can do lots of configuration by plugging a laptop into it and do small settings on it. Comes with a built-in gyro as part of that magic box, um, which definitely does work. It's very stable to fly. Apparently you can fly these pretty slow as well and they're very aerobatic. Yet to see any of that from Manuel. He's not quite got the confidence with it yet. And in fairness, I've not had a go either. And he probably won't let me have a go after watching this video, if he does watch it. So all we're gonna do really is set up these air brakes at the back. So the rudders basically act as an air brake by coming inwards um, to slow the model down when you're landing. So as you see, it's, it's, a, pretty, it's a pretty slippery slippery looking model. Uh, of course, that's the downside, no one carriage, loads of mud, a few creases there. That might have been where we straightened it back up after the crash, in fairness. But the idea is to slow it down. So what we do is let's go and have a look at the manual as to how to configure that, and then I'll configure that on the transmitter so you see how it's done. Now there is one small caveat apparently, and it says this in the very fine print of not the manual, but the knowledge base, again, linked below, um, which Flex provide say if you're using Futaba, you may have to reverse some settings directly on the smart magic box thing inside here. Um, otherwise, they will work in reverse. So in other words, the mix is wrong. Because you've got two things to set really. First of all, we've got a switch to enable air brakes. 
the air brakes only come on when the throttle is down low, then as you increase the throttle, the air brakes automatically start coming back off. Um, and apparently that's the wrong way around if you use Shoot Harbor. So you put the switch on, full throttle, air brakes will come on. I think that's just gonna end up with a mess. Could also be worth trying. Um, so let's check it out, make sure it's working the right way around. But first, let's go to the manual. Okay, so I'm on the Flex Innovations website here. Uh, model costs about 240 bucks, so whatever that is in local currency. Um, plenty of suppliers. Here's all the funky stuff is included. Let's try it again, the FT Aura 5 Light Advance Flight Control System, which enhances the flight without ever feeling intrusive. It's more than just a gyro. Sounds good. <laughs> Launch assist, I can't say this without laughing. <laughs> Launch this helps provide worry-free hand launches and helps you focus on the fun flying. <laughs> sorry, sorry, mate. Um, okay, but move on. Somewhere here, there is a link to... Oh, there's Launch Assist. That's pretty cool. Somewhere here, there is a link to the manual, but I've loaded it up um, already. And again, link it below. It's a nice PDF document. Step-by-step -step instructions to setting it up. And if we look over here, we've got launch assist, page 21, trimming, quick change mode, page 23. So I guess, you know, if you just scan the TOC, the table of contents, you might not see breaks in there, but a quick search. Also doesn't show you, that's useful, but I know it's on page 22-ish because I've actually read it. So there you go, air brakes. Uh, level assist, no we don't want that, we want air brakes. Air brakes are when both rudders deflect in the opposite directions toward the centre of the aircraft which causes drag and slows the aircraft down. The FT Aura 5 Lite uses channel 6 from your transmitter as an on off switch to control the air brakes. While active the air brakes are also mixed to the throttle so that simply advancing the throttle will assign the rudders to neutral. Makes sense, Turns it takes the air brakes off as you increase the power. Assign channel 6 to a two-way position switch in your transmitter if you wish to activate air brakes. So that is really all we need should need to do. Um, but we may need to do something different if we're using Futaba. Now note, it doesn't say anything about that in the instructions whatsoever. But Flex also have a wiki, so a knowledge base. Wiki stands for what I know is. That's what it used to stand for anyway. Tech nerd geek fact for you there. Um, so yeah, it has a a wiki and on the wiki there's a whole load of stuff in here particularly about the prana and somewhere in here there's a little tiny side note that says but if you want to use air brakes and you want and you're using a futaba transmitter then you may have to go and reverse that mix condition um, not in the transmitter but directly on that smart box i'm just gonna call it smart box it's just much easier for me um, is it there? No. Instruction manual, wiki, or build tips, product page. Right, let me find it. Bear with. Or a config tool, latest updates. Um, I did have it open. Flex innovations. Yeah, see, 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 it obviously is difficult to see. Difficult to find. How did I find it last time? Oh, I was watching, I was reading modelaviation.com who have done a really good article on the Flex Innovation Piranha um, and a video as well. So let's link that below for you so you've got all the details you want. Well worth a read. Oh, it was only 200 bucks back then. Prices have increased. And in here, they mention the air brakes. See all this research I've done for Manuel. Manuel? Manuel? Sending the Piranha, setting up the Piranha. Sport mode, flight controller, air brakes. See, they mention air brakes here, but I actually tell you how to turn them on. Scroll back, it's not on the PDF. Let's go and search the wiki again. So, there was a side note for Futaba. Config tool, no, not that page. Printed manual errors, that's always good to know. Amendments. PNP server notice. Aha, there we go, I found it. Right, we'll definitely make sure. This is in the wiki, it's in Piranha, it's in latest updates. And at the bottom there, there's build tips. And at the bottom of the build tips, there's one tip. 
instructions for reversing the Piranha air brake mix for Futaba users. Crow and air brake mixing reversing for Futaba users. Typically it's preferred to connect your throttle server leads or ESC, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm not gonna read all that out, but this is what we may have to work through. Um, so what we're gonna do, let's just get the transmitter on, get it configured for the model. We need to bind the receiver. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and we'll configure channel six and we'll just see which way around this air brake, you know, whether the mix is working or not. Does it work on idle or does it work on full throttle? If it doesn't work, then we'll go into this guide here, which seems to have about a thousand steps. Oh no, I exaggerate. It's got a few steps. Um, where you basically connect the flight control unit into um, your computer using some of the software that they provided. And then you tweak a couple of settings here, um, which has changed the master channel and changed the slave channel, the way that the positive negative way the mix is going. Don't worry, I'll cover that in more detail if we get to do it. I might, you know what, I might just do it anyway, for those of you in case some of you do just come up with it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's pause there. Let's get out the transmitter and see if we can just bind channel six to a switch. Simple as that. Okay guys, I just thought I'd show you this. So <laughs> I've just got the transmitter out, like I said, and I thought, you know, just simply bind the transmitter to the receiver, because this is obviously my transmitter and not Manuel's transmitter. Um, and Christ, first of all, I had to work out how to take the, the hatch off. Okay, that was, that was me just being stupid. Then you have to unscrew the back end. So, okay, the receiver's obviously clearly under there. But no, no, the receiver's not under there. The receiver is actually underneath the ESC, which you can probably just see through that gap there. So if I really got to take out these plates by undoing those five screws, disturb all that ESC, disturb all that cabling there, just so I can bind it, and then he's gonna have to redo it as well. Oh well, is what it is, let's crack on. Right, so, bit of a mess. I've had to take canopy off, Fine. Unscrew the back end. You've seen it already. I've now taken the plate out with the five fixing screws, which can't come all the way out because it's connected into the LEDs. But I found the little receiver. There it is. Little S bus receiver. Very nice. Very tidy. And that's the link switch I want. Can you see that? Yeah, just in there somewhere. So I can now link it to the transmitter. Now, this is absolutely typical of our hobby, a five minute job. Oh mate, can you just set up, just set up my air brakes for me? Yeah, no problem Manuel, that'd be absolutely fine. Half an hour later, we haven't even done the job yet and the model's in bits. Let's get it linked. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, according to the manual, is to assign channel six to a switch. So we do that um, just by selecting linkage menu, go into function and it doesn't really matter what the function's called I mean I've set it to flap that kind of works uh, hit the control here and assign to switch so I'm going to use SC and there we go that is assigned Okay, so now we've done that, we need to um, power up the model and use these two tiny, tiny buttons, which I'll show you in a minute, to put the, <laughs> what the hell is it called? Um, the, the magic box into a particular mode and then tell it to activate the air brake and then tell it to save those settings. Without doing that, it's just simply not gonna work. Um, so let's do that now. Let's plug in the 6S. I have got the motor disconnected at the moment, just for safety. Let me zoom you in. See if we can see those little tiny buttons on the screen. Oh, oh too far, too far, slow down. Get a bit of focus. And there we go, so one's called trim. And the other one is called, what's it called? Bind, bind, I just made that up. Yeah, it's called, sorry, fingers everywhere, it's called bind. So, you need to find something, because my fingers are way too big, to press both switches at the same time, which turns the red LED, you can just about see, 
a different color, might even flash, we'll find out. And that means it's in configuration mode. So you can do all this without plugging in, so far, a computer. Let's check it out. Um, let's find something I can actually use. Right, let's see if I can get this first time. No pressure mats, fingers everywhere. Oh no, that was a bit dodgy. Try again. One, two, okay. It's gone flashing blue. That feels about right. Now we press and hold trim until it changes color again. One, two, three. Hmm. It's flashing. Not sure if that's right, to be honest with you. Doesn't feel right. I'm going to start the process again. Just unplug it so it doesn't save anything. Let's check it's all on. Yeah, she's on. Right, okay, let me try something. I'm going to use a screwdriver tip and just be really careful not to touch the circuit board. Because um, that'd be a bad thing. But she'll want to be able to make sure I push both switches. There we go. One, two, three. Four. flashing green right that's better now press and hold trim one two three four solid red solid red and you probably just heard all the servers just did a quick reset so that should be activated but to save it I've got to press both buttons again one two three it's all gone off. I'm going to release, and that should be it. So let's just zoom out on that same angle, and I'll grab the transmitter. That's right, ailerons up, down as well. Rudder's working. Why is it doing that? Oh, it's working. It goes off right, up, down. Okay, now flick the SC switch. That's it, it's working. There you go. So just go for that slowly. Oh, this is a delay. Right, okay. So I'll just go back over that for you. So elevator's working, ailerons are working, rudder's working as normal, throttle is down, that's key. Um, if I turn the flaps on, they come straight in. So air brakes come straight in, off. If throttle's up, now they shouldn't come in. See, they're not in. But when I bring the throttle down, they start coming back in from about half throttle. So again, if you're going slow, you want to go around, you're not going to make the landing, you start opening up the throttle and the air brakes start decreasing as that throttle is opening, then above half throttle, obviously they're, they're fully not active at that point. Bring it back in. And that's full air brake. And then of course it's also on the SC switch. Off completely, on. Um, obviously when they're activated, the rudder still works. So you can still get some movement. A little bit left, just releasing it, releasing the far side one, but increasing the near side, and right doing the opposite as well. So that is really job job. So what we'll do is we'll just recap that quickly now for you, because it wasn't straightforward. Took a bit of time messing about, but the trick really was making sure it was activated here and also assigning it in the linkage function menu and assigning the SC switch here. So guys, that's about it for this time around. Now I do appreciate I did say that I would plug this in. I'm sorry, plug this in to the PC and show you all the advanced stuff you can do through the software. But quite frankly, I don't want to. I don't want to because the software is only PC and they've not written a Mac version. I mean, come on guys, it's 2023. Sort yourself out. You need to have Mac software as well nowadays. So I'm not gonna do it. Um, end story really. Um, hopefully you have found this useful though. If you know if you do want to set this up for crow breaking it's just a case of messing around with the buttons on the magic box, whatever it's called. Um, but overall, I think the model's pretty good. 
we will do a follow-up video on this um, flying it we're going to try the hand launch as well we're going to try this breaking out down at the field to see what that works out like so make sure you please like subscribe hit the bell for notifications so you get the next video so you get the notification of the next video that makes more sense cheers guys see you next time around.